Okay, welcome back to the Commodore 64, uh, the black screen repair. Now, in the last video, it was a quick time lapse of me replacing all of the electrolytic capacitors on there. Um, I think in the video, I missed this one off, um, but I have actually put that in there now, so that's all good. Uh, all the capacitors are lovely and new, um, so it should work absolutely fine once we figure out what the actual problem is. Now, I've got here the uh, a replacement PLA. Um, so this is a very special... Uh, PLA uh, replacement, it's called Plankton, um, and this is um, basically an ASIC chip um, that replaces the functionality of the PLA, which is a programmable logic array. Normally in Commodore 64, this is the thing that goes, um, and it's what causes black screens. So we're going to have a look, see if this is um, the cause of the fault. If not, um, then the only other thing I can think of um, is either the CIAs might be faulty, but then they should really show something on the screen if they're faulty. Or we might have a problem with the VIC. Um, that's the only other thing. Or it could even be the CPU. <laughs> if, if, the, if the PLA doesn't fix it, um, I'm kind of running out of options. So we're going to pull the PLA out um, of this one. Um, so let's just grab hold of that with my chip pull and we're going to lift it straight up and out there we go let's just pop that over there and we have here the lovely plankton uh it's got slightly dodgy legs on there but let's just pop this in here push it straight in come on in you go there we go lovely nice so that sits in there like that so that's a replacement pla right now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, power on my television here, my CRT, and plug this in, and plug this in, and we're gonna see what we get. Turn it on, and we still have a black screen. Right, okay, so it's not the PLA then. Hmm, interesting. Um, so where do we go from here? Uh, I'm going to get my logic analyzer out, actually. Um, there we go. So this is a, a logic analyzer. It's just a cheap one. Um, only less than a tenner, I think. And uh, I've got those are colors here. And I'm going to connect these. Uh, let's just have a look. Right, we, we verified that the chips are all getting power. So we've got the correct power coming into the chip, so that's fine. Um, I'm not sure, should we check the data lines maybe? Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's check the clock. Let's have a look at the clock um, to make sure that the, the CPU is putting out the right clock. Because it, it could be a crystal fault, it could be timing issues on the board. Um, I don't like to think that it was this chip that's gone. Um, Okay, let, let's have let's have a look at let's have a look at the timing. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna connect this to the board, and then we'll we'll come back in just a second. I've got to find the pinouts for the CPU. Right, so I've got the pinouts here. Um, so we can see here, pin one on the CPU is um, phase one, phi one. Um, so this is the the clock input to develop the internal overlapping phase two clock. So it's one megahertz or two megahertz speeds. And then number 39, pin 39, if we look down here, is phase two output. So the processor generates this clock signal from the phase one clock applied. The two clock signals are 180 degrees out of phase. The phase two clock is used in decoding I.O. and memory on the positive half cycle. Um, so basically what will happen is the, when the clock comes in, so the clock, the, this clock will normally run the microprocessor, and then the out of phase clock will run like uh, memory latches and things like that. So that's how bus transfers will work. Um, I can do a video on that if you want to at some point. But uh, yeah, bus transfers are very interesting. It's the way all old computers, and in fact quite a lot of modern computers, still actually work by putting information out on a bus, um, latching it in, and then saving it to RAM or whatever. Right, so my little probe hook. don't know if you can see that. It's very... Need something to focus on, doesn't it? There we go, my little little pincers there. I'm going to connect the first one there, if I can see, to pin one. Let's just make sure I've got a good connection on there. Okay, yep. 
and I'm going to connect my second pin. Was it pin 39? So let's just grab pin 39 like that and stick that onto here. Okay, so what we should have here is two uh, clocks. So clock one and clock two should be 180 degrees out of phase and that should be fine. Um, so let's move over to my laptop here um, and I'm running the pulse view. Uh, let me just see if I can connect my device. Okay, so over on the laptop here, we've got my logic analyzer. Um, now, it runs between one and two megahertz. So I'm actually gonna increase the resolution to four megahertz. So that means hopefully we won't get any problems with uh, reading the clock triggers. Um, and we're gonna want, let's say five seconds worth of samples. Uh, it's gonna be 20 million. So tw 20 million samples um, at four megahertz. Now here, uh, let me just change this. So in the video, uh, I connected the red wire to, um, Phi one. Oh, I've got caps lock on. So that's the clock. And here, um, Phi two was connected to orange, I believe. Okay, and we don't need any of the others. So let me just deselect. Oh, no. Let me just deselect those. Okay, good. Right. So here we go. Let me just move those to the middle of the screen. And well, what we're going to do is I'm going to switch the machine on and hit run and it will start capturing all those cycles. So the machine is now on and let's run it and see what we... Oh, that doesn't look right. That doesn't look right at all. Uh, let's zoom in. Now you see a regular clock, this should not have any gaps in it. And then when we zoom in, look, we've got, got the clock here. That's, oh yeah. Okay. Looks like there might be a clock issue. So that would point to this part of the circuit here. So if we're looking here where the clock circuit is and the VIC chip, I'm gonna try swapping out this VIC chip and uh, see what happens because the VIC takes the crystal. Um, I can't measure that because unfortunately my logic analyzer doesn't have a high enough resolution to measure nearly 18 megahertz. Um, so I can't check the crystal. Um, but this should out, the, the VIC some, somewhere should output that. Uh, but then, I don't know. I tell you what, I've got another Commodore. I'm going to swap out this VIC for um, another VIC I, I know is kind of working because it, it boots up but gives garbage, which is probably a RAM issue. That'll be another video for fixing. So let's swap out that and um, see what happens. I'll turn that off. Oh yeah, I'll turn the screen off. Right, okay, I'm gonna swap that out and see what happens. I'm gonna disconnect this as well. Right, okay, so I've pulled out the, uh, the VIC from this one. Uh, and I have the VIC from the other one. Now I know this one's working perfectly fine. Uh, which way around does it go? That way around. So let's just pop this into the socket there. Okay, and I'm gonna turn the television on. Just make sure that's on and out the way. And I'm also going to hook up the logic analyzer just to check these lines again, just to see what we get. That's that. Look, hooked onto that. Looks like a heart, doesn't it? Lovely. It's like I'm giving heart surgery. Um, okay, so let's move over to pulse view as well. And I'm going to take the camera down here as well. Right. Okay, so there's the screen. Uh, excuse the flickering. And I'm going to hit run on pulse view and then switch on the Commodore. So in, I've got five seconds to do, do this. So here we go, let's try and get this right first time. So, on. Oh, look at that. So that, that is a nice looking screen right there. That's working. That's a fully working Commodore 64. We know what the problem is. Yeah. Oh, and also let's have a look at the uh, 
logic thing. Look at this. Oops, I just dropped my phone on the floor. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> and so let's have a look here. You can see this clock looks a lot healthier. I mean, yeah, fair enough. We've got some strange things there, but that, I mean, when we're zoomed out like this, that looks, that's how a clock should look. You know, it shouldn't, it's when we start getting really deep into it, that's when we see it. And you can see it's kind of half out of phase as well, which is what it's supposed to be. So that's awesome. So yeah, we've found the problem. Marvellous. Okay. Right. So there we go then. We've uh, managed to get it to go um, from black screen to working. We know what the problem is, so I'll have to order a separate um, Vic chip for that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat sink uh, the relevant chips. So I have somewhere around here. Yeah, here we go. So I've got here some silicon paste, uh, a couple of long heat sinks, and a couple of small heat sinks, as well as some alcohol wipes. Let's just get that out of the way. And what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to clean off, this is my Vic chip anyway, so I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to put a heat sink on there because this chip tends to heat up. I'm going to put a heat sink on the SID because that tends to heat up and a heat sink on the CPU. Now the PLA, this one, this replacement one, doesn't get hot. Um, so I might heat sink this one um, if it's working. Um, yeah, so we've got heat sinks everywhere. So then this should last um, a hell of a long time, basically, once we get a new one in there and I get it properly heat synced. Uh, so yeah, let's just... Uh Right, okay, so there we go then, heat synced up. I've got to let this sit for 48 hours so that it dries out and these adhere to the chips. Um, I'm going to pull this one back out um, and I've got to get a replacement for that. So that's going to be fine. We know what's wrong. We know that it basically works. Um, so yeah, we've got a, a working C64 now. Um, so yeah, good good news uh, all round. Um, so Barry, let me know what you want. Do you want this PLA? <laughs> Um, PLA replacement. Uh, if not, I'll put that one back in. I'll take this one for myself. Um, but yeah, I will have to ask you for some money for the video chip. Uh, but thank you very much for watching this series. Uh, the next series will be a Commodore 64 with a garbage screen. Uh, so that's going to be quite fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, please check out our links. Uh, we've got a Patreon, the tips. Um, if you'd like to see any other videos, any ideas you'd like to let us know about, uh, please do. Um, more than happy to hear from you. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching this series. Check out the other videos. And until the next time, until the next video, thank you very much for watching. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Ooh, I've got silicon paste on my fingers. Yee. Heat-synced finger. Lovely.